Welcome to the resort. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Club fed. <laughs> All right. So the question I asked you out on the club deck. Can you fix that one blind? Oh, is it bothering you? It is, is this one going to mess you up yeah, tonight? Really what is. if I did these? <laughs> Thank you. If, if you... <laughs> Am I on? Is this on? Whatever. Mic check. I feel like I'm 700 yards away. Doesn't matter. If you could only have. This is for all you out there, too. <laughs> Please, answer in the comments. If you could only have one pleasure for the rest of your life. One of these two. Taking a shit. Or. What was the other one? Uh, orgasm. Orgasm. I was going to say climax. No, what did I say? Same yeah. thing. Or an orgasm, which one would you pick? So, either or. You get, you had to have one of the the, uh, the... the question is, I just want to make sure I understand this. The question is, you can only enjoy one pleasure for the rest of your life out of two options. Yes. Taking a shit. Yes. Or having an orgasm. Yes. If you choose one, you lose the other. This is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Orgasm. You choose that one? Yeah, I think I'd choose the orgasm. Yeah. I think I would choose technical difficulties. I think I would choose the orgasm. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Only because, and here's why. Okay. Here's why. And when I give you this logic, you'll understand why. Okay. <laughs> I'll put my thinking cap on. You ever try like ghost pepper before? Uh, no. Yeah, I've never tried one either. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> from the stories <laughs> I've heard, it's not so much the ten to fifteen minutes of semi to mildly excruciating heat and pain you endure mm -hmm. through your mouth. That's the worst part of the whole experience. It's the shit after. Yep. How many times have you eaten hot wings? And I'm talking hot, hot, like, whoo, god damn, I got to take time on these things. And then four to eight hours later, I hate my life. Not often. You've never shit burning magma. No, not, yes, to, have. not, not to that extent. Your butthole's never burnt after eating hot food. Not to that extent. I'm just metaphorically speaking here. You got a sense of butthole, is that what you're telling the world? No. <laughs> I'm just saying, you've never had a little bit of a burning sensation after taking a poop because you ate some hot food? For sure, but not to the extent okay. where I'm... Well, some people... Okay. I don't know about present company included, <laughs> but there have been people in this world that have described horror stories right. about taking poops. With ghost peppers. With ghost peppers, the one chip challenge. Uh, I heard that. Whatever. Um, and then, of course, you know, you're, you're a strapping young lad. You ever taken one of those big old poopers <laughs> where it's like, oh my God, I could definitely satisfy a very well endowed man. Have you ever, I, okay, I, 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 so my, so the answer is I would go with the orgasm because every time I take a poop, is it guaranteed to be a good feeling or is there going to be some bad ones? Cause I don't mind getting rid of the bad ones. Well, I said a pleasure. So. Yeah, but do you feel like good? Do you feel pleasure when it's not pleasure? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. All right, well, that answers that. I would go with orgasm. <laughs> now, I got a question. I got something for you. What? Next time you take a poop. I, you already told me this. Yeah. <laughs> Folks at home, next time you take a poop, look in that toilet before you wipe and put toilet paper on top of it. <laughs> To cover up your shame. And then <laughs> I want you to think to yourself, wow, <coughs> that came out of me. That means something that big can go inside of me. You will never, ever look at your poop the same again. Every time you look, you be like, oh man, I could definitely satisfy someone who's well endowed. Like Hulk Hogan once said, that'll take that will, that'll definitely take care of a toilet torpedo. Remember Welcome that, back, everybody. Remember that episode <laughs> when he flushes the toilet? Of Hulk Hogan.
Hogan knows best. Yeah, Hogan knows best. I don't. Oh god, that that was like what, that's twenty years ago. There was one episode I remember where he goes to his bathroom, he flushes, and it's got like the turbo jet. Right. And he goes, "Oh yeah, that'll definitely take care of a toilet torpedo." <laughs> I was like, "That's the episode you remember." <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about the episodes with his daughter that I remembered. Welcome back. Oh, I remember well, I remember it over and over again. <laughs> some late evenings. It was like 30 over. seconds that episode, wasn't it? No, they're. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. So, what's up, buddy? <laughs> you kind of. Welcome back. Skip the beat. <laughs> that's on me. Yeah, that's okay. Sorry. Life, life happens. What are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, no. So who doesn't love getting a good swift kick in the balls every now and again from life? Well, yeah, well, I I don't. That's for sure. Fuck no. Sometimes it's, I wonder if we should have done like a st- a more serious podcast and just talk about life shit. Uh, that would. Pre- <laughs> fuck no. I gotta live with that shit in my head. What makes you think I want to hear it out loud? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Bills, oh. Responsibilities, oh. Work, oh. Guy who touches me while I sleep, oh. What? <laughs> Is it your neighbor? I don't want to talk about it. All right. Wait. I don't, my neighbors are cool. Well, I'm sure they are. <laughs> yes, all of them are. Yeah, we took a break. Well, yeah, we, 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 we took we, a weekend off, folks. Yeah, took a weekend off. Well, last weekend we took, yeah, we ended up taking a weekend off. Originally, we weren't going to, but last weekend we went and saw, because it's all over the news, and I was like, well, I want to see this flick. So we went and saw The Sound of Freedom. That was a heavy movie. Um, Very well done. It was well done. It was this minor criticism I had, which I had the same, I think I have the same for a lot of movies nowadays. It was like 15 minutes too long. It could have been a little shorter. They could have cut a little bit out here and there. Nothing that would have affected the story, but I, I had the same gripe when I went and saw the new Indiana Jones movie. I was like, yeah, it was yeah, good. I remember but that. But then with the Indiana Jones flick, like the way the movie starts is like the end of an Indiana Jones movie. Like you're, you're at the end of one adventure and it picks riding up. off into the sunset yeah it, it picks up at the very start of the next adventure so yeah. that kind of makes sense it's like all right well the indiana jones adventure is about the same length but and plus it's like johnstown theater seats yeah and they're notoriously not comfortable no. but <clears throat> i didn't really pay that much attention and sound by no means am I, are we saying it's a bad place to go enjoy a film it actually is a good place to go enjoy a film. as long as it's under two hours yeah after that, the seats do become uncomfortable. I'll give you that. But Sound the, of Freedom. The exception of the rule is Sound of Freedom, where I didn't really pay much attention to the uncomfortable seats. That movie was heavy, which I think anyone who's already seen it knows. It was incredible. Spoiler alert. Yeah, there'll be some spoilers. Um, it was incredibly heavy for obvious reasons. One is the little girl in the movie all i could do the entire time was superimpose my daughter's face on her so it just made it that much worse it's getting a lot of gripe in the media right now from left-wing media one is there's a lot of left-wing media that's saying the whole movie is fake um now initially they're like well the movie's fake it's like well yeah it's a dramatization it's not a documentary which we already talked about it's like yeah. this movie's not the documentary mel gibson actually they're coming out with a documentary a four-part docuseries based after tim ballard the the, the officer the agent in the movie yep based after the the i guess mission for lack of a better term that they went on during the movie so that's what that docuseries is about this movie is a dramatization of that story of, of that, of that up, yeah. yeah of that uh story so initially i'm like well yeah it's a it's a it's a movie and so there's drama in it of course it's, so it's not but they're saying that tim ballard never did any of that like any of it did oh did you listen to the tim pool episode yeah that I, okay i did so you got like the stories behind the stories which yeah. was like holy shit yeah some mm. of them was like that okay I'm glad you brought that up because watching that podcast or that episode of Tim Pool, 
having already sat down and watched the movie. Now, I did the same thing you did to an extent. I don't have a daughter. I do have two sons. I soup. I, I I put myself like I found myself in that mindset. Like, what would have happened? Here I am, a father. Who doesn't want to see their kids become successful? Who doesn't want to see right. their kids have an amazing life? And the movie starts out with exactly that: a woman approaching a father about his your daughter. daughter. Your daughter is going to be like she, she promised her the stars, the moon, yeah. the world, everything. It's like and she's going to be great. And then event, and then she ends up taking on the little the sister, the little girl's brother. And hence the story begins. Right. You know, I would love for my tro- my kids to, to 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 literally have it made before they hit the real world. Right. Because then they never have to ex- go through the, the 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 hardships that we've had to endure. You know, I'm not saying like oh starving homeless. No, like living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, you know, making sure you have rent, making sure there's enough food in the house, making sure your bills are paid. Uh oh, you can't pay this bill. Well, what bill do I skip so I can pay this bill? Because I need my car to have a job. Right. That's the hardships I mean. I don't want to see my kids go through that. I no parent wants to see their kids go through that. Right. So yeah, any parent in their right mind sees an opportunity, a gen what they think is a genuine opportunity to get their kids on a path that will lay out a life for them that you could only have ever wished for. Who wouldn't want to take that opportunity? So, but then watching the rest of the movie, like the movie, like I said, I watched the movie, and like I said, there was moments where it's like it was hidden, and it felt heavy. But then, for the most part, I kept myself in the mindset: this is just a movie telling a story, yeah. a dramatization of actual events. But then, watching the Tim Pool episode and hearing the stories behind the stories, it's like. Well, goddamn! Yeah, that was, that well, made that as dra- as much of a dramatization as that movie was. The stories behind, if you watch the Tim Pool, put the link in the description or whatever. If you watch that episode to hear some of the stories, some of the things he saw, some of the things he like, there was I think he was telling there was a, something he talks about going in and seeing stuff happening. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, we don't uh, initially like on. He would go into different scenarios, and basically he'd have to. It'd be like being an undercover. Yeah, like you have to go into the lion's den, so to speak, and report on what you are seeing. But you can't intervene in any way because then the whole sting is blown. Yep, so that's got to be fucking hard. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like then you hear some of the stuff he's talking about that he's actually seen, witnessed. Some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and behind the stories that this event is based off of and it's like holy fuck that right there was the nail in the cloth that made that movie even after being i think what you hit me up with that thursday well uh, the podcast yeah wednesday or thursday we talked uh, i think it was like monday or tuesday no no we only talked on the phone a couple of days ago yeah but i sent the podcast to you before it was like monday or two i think it was monday i sent that because it was right after we saw the movie tim ballard was on Tim Pool's podcast the week before, like that Thursday or Friday before we Monday. Went. You're right. Yeah. Sorry, I do apologize. And I was like, I, because I, I started to listen to that episode, and then he goes like right in the beginning, he's like, oh, there's gonna be some spoilers. Like, I, oh, I, I can't right. listen to yep. it now. So okay. I waited, saw the saw the film, and then after went back and listened to the show. And I'm glad I did it in that order. But yeah, like you said, some of the stories you get off it. One, talking about dramatization. The side character, I guess, the guy that helped him down. The cartel guy, yeah. Yeah, the guy, the ex cartel guy that helped him get in, like, set up, basically. In bed. In yeah. Be- yeah. I get the story he tells in the movie. Again, this is where spoilers come in. The story he tells in the movie, how he got into it was at the end of whatever, he went and picked up a prostitute that he and, thought was of yeah, age. Yeah, and did the deed, and then. He saw that he they were uh, of age, and in the movie he says, and then she was getting. I saw her getting dressed, getting herself ready, and then there was like kit or Hello Kitty or one of those kind of things painted yeah, on her on nails. Her fingernails, yeah. And it turns out she was fourteen. The actual story was he hooked up with a prostitute that was of age, but while he was hooked up with that prostitute, she was openly talking about selling her kids. To the trafficking thing yeah and that's how he got involved in it in, in the real life which i actually talked to uh the missus and she said that was probably a better story than the one they came up with in the movie like this but i mean either way it's fucked up but 
So that's how that happened. Did you hear the other story of when they were filming? It's a, not a real long story, but it's kind of a long chain of events. When they were filming in um, Colombia. Was it? It was on the podcast. And the way it happened is when they... Uh, Jim Caviezel, who played Christ in The Passion of the Christ, he was the one that... Um, He was the one that um, played Tim Ballard in the movie, the main yeah. character. So when Angel Studios approached Jim Caviezel to play this part, he was like, well, I don't know. Let me." It basically, he had to get the wife's permission. He was on board. He's like, well, let me let get me the, wife, the yeah, wife. Let me talk to the wife. Because he's a family man. So he goes back. He comes, he comes back and talks to the director. He goes, well, I got good news and bad news. So he goes, what's the good news? Jim goes, the good news is I'm 100% on board. Here's the thing, because part of it was shot in Colombia. He goes, bad news is my wife doesn't want me going to Colombia, because Colombia. So what they ended up doing is getting 30 ex-Navy SEALs to go with them oh, yeah. down to Colombia when okay. they shot. So here's where the story kicks in. I'm like, wow. They go down there with the ex-Navy SEALs, and they start, and they're filming one of the days they show up to set and half of the crew is gone half of the seals no idea why like where the hell did they go no idea i think it was the next day in one of the local papers um one of the guys on set reads in the papers oh there was a sting and they busted 200 uh, or they busted a child sex ring and got 200 of the kids they rescued during the filming of this movie yeah turns out Half of those seals were involved in that sting. The way they came about finding out was while they were all down there shooting, they were out and about at when they were offset, and a couple of the guys came up, a couple of these uh, traffickers came up to them thinking they were tourists looking for a good time. They brought it up to them. Oh, you're looking for a good time? You want this? Funny how just in the movie they were talking. Ex it's exactly what they were filming. Yep. So the, the half or however many of the ex-Navy Navy SEALs were involved in the sting just by chance going down filming a movie about just that. So in filming the movie, they, they busted up. They saved 200 children. Yeah, yeah. And, and the director said, if we had gone out, filmed this movie, and it was a flop, he goes, it was 100% worth it just for the fact that they rescued those 200 kids from just that. He said... Well, when they were, well, he goes back. He goes. He told Jim. He goes. You got to tell your wife that she's the one because she didn't want Jim going down there. <laughs> that two hundred kids are now free. Well, no. And in essence, because I, I thought it's funny that you bring that because I said that in my head too. I'm like, wow, this bitch. <laughs> she almost didn't help. To, and then I got thinking about. It, I'm like, well, if she didn't say. Yeah, if she wasn't if comfortable. She, no, no, no. If she had said, yeah, sure, be my guest, do what you want, they would never have brought those Navy SEALs. That's it. Yeah, that's just it. If she wasn't comfortable with him going down there, the ex-Navy SEALs wouldn't, wouldn't have been, been there. And, and then possibly yeah. that would have never happened. So in an essence, because she was an overprotective or overly concerned wife, she inadvertently helped rescue 200 kids from, yeah. a, 200 kids from a child sex trafficker. Yeah. Uh, situation. But... Going back, the yeah, so the left wing media, like I said, is just tearing this apart. It they're saying it's fake and they're saying it's propaganda and they're saying, and my initial response, it really still is my response, is even if this story never happens, the fact that like the stats that are given in the movie are, and that's what I was looking for when I was they here, I looked at them, they're, they're accurate, they're 100% accurate, and I'll go through them in a little bit here. The how you could try to denounce it. And yeah. be like, oh, this isn't this isn't a real thing. Yeah. No. Yeah, Dude. that's right. Like downplays it's not a real thing. It's not as big as this and that's whatever. Like wh even even if that's right, it's not as big. It's still a fucking thing. It, Why would you try to talk it down? Like, here here's what the left needs to stop and say, look, we understand this is a serious issue. We do understand that there is statistical data that verifies what is going on. In regards to this story, it is an overdramatization of a of a not of a of a non factual situation. We do not appreciate them trying to make money off of this. Right. You know, this is a serious issue that needs to be addressed. You know, go ahead, play the hero card because you're not. But 
play the, oh, we're trying to do the right thing, you know, but this is a bad movie. Yeah, they're, and that's fucked up. They're playing it off. Uh, this is one thing that has been thrown around a lot by left-wing media. It's a QAnon film. Oh, it's, yeah. It's QAnon yeah. propaganda. I remember you Here's the about fucking that. kicker. This movie was shot, and it, it, they, he started writing, I think he said in 2015. He said it was shot and relatively finished filming in 2018. It's been done for f- between four and five years yep. before it came out now. QAnon was not a thing when this movie was being written, let alone like filmed and and completed. Yeah, it wasn't a thing. This QAnon terminology hasn't come out except for the last year. No, it's been out for probably about three years. Well, well I, I mean, mean really be, January to 6th. Be, to be, yeah, I was going to say, to be <clears throat> more specific since like the March on Capitol Hill. Right. So this is from the Rolling Stone. This says, Sound of Freedom is a superhero movie for dads with brain worms. <laughs> Fuck. I guess that's me. <laughs> I got the brain worms. The guilty as charged. Uh, familiar. Oh, based on a true story I heard from somewhere across the theater. This is whoever's writing this article. It's Rolling Stone. The familiar words have appeared on screen and an elderly man had taken it upon himself to read them aloud to the rest of a sizable audience seated for a matinee showing of the anti-child trafficking thriller Sound of Freedom, starring Jim Caviezel. For the season's moviegoer, this phrase is a joke, which, yes, okay, because most of the time when they say based on a true story, it could be very close to the truth or just an ounce of a, a another nuance story. Of truth yeah. In it, yeah. Uh, we know that cinema will stretch almost any truth to be break to the breaking point. Wow, uh, Rolling Stones! Hold on, before you continue reading, Wow, Rolling Stones, way to fuck yourself with that statement. The Hollywood will stretch any truth, but this isn't a true story. But they'll stretch any truth, but this isn't a true story. Make up your fucking mind, retards. Oh, sorry, <laughs> artard. <laughs> Whatever. Caviezel, best Edit known for that out. <laughs> Caviezel, best known for being tortured to death in Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, has become a prominent figure on the conspiracies or conspiracy. Uh, cons- uh, holy shit! Conspiracist right, giving speeches and interviews in which he hints at an underground holy war being uh, between patriots and a sinister legion of evil doers who are harvesting the blood of children. It's straight up QAnon stuff, right down to his use of catchphrases like "the storm is upon us." Here he acts to act out some of that drama by playing a fictionalized version of Tim Ballard, head of the anti-sex trafficking nonprofit uh, Operation Underground Railroad, in a feature film that casts the operator as a Batman-style savior for kids sold into sex trade. What is wrong with somebody putting out a, mu- a movie, a decent movie at that, shedding light on such a terrible subject you know what's funny rolling stone they clearly i are kind of anti this movie three years ago i think remember cuties on netflix yeah with the like the prepubescent girls dancing and twerking and stuff yeah guess who is all about cuties Rolling Stone. <laughs> wow. But that was okay. As long as they're twerking, showing their stuff, 12, 11, 13 year olds, that's cool. But if you say, hey, uh, maybe we shouldn't uh, maybe we shouldn't traffic kids, well, that's fucking crazy conspiracy theory of QAnon bullshit. Now you're just talking crazy. It's almost as if it's just, like prevalent in the United States. <laughs> Like media and politics and actors and things. Now, they probably don't really do that. But th- I think that's what they're not implying. YouTube. <laughs> wow, here goes another video getting struck down for misinformation. Eh. Yeah. So, the <laughs> I mean, the message right now. Assemble. <laughs> I needed to come up with a word for, for the letter A. <laughs> the um, why is it doing this to me? I'm trying to bring up stats. 
Anyways, no, the message go. right now always points to somebody who says, this is bad. And then in the back, they're doing it themselves. This, uh, f- <laughs> I'm not good with an acronym. Fuck off. From worldchildren.org. So they bring up in the movie, they spit off some stats at the end of the stats yeah. during, during the, yeah the during post, and the credit the scene during the movie and at the end yeah um so i was like well let, let's let's look them up let's just just to see so child trafficking stats so 27 percent of trafficking victims are children uh so the majority <sighs> of human trafficking victims are involved in forced labor labor trafficking involves the use of fraud uh cohesion or force in order to get a victim to provide labor or services. More than two-thirds of tracking vi- trafficking victims fall into this category, including more than 10 million adults and nearly 4 million children. Speaking of 10 million adults, right when this movie came out, as, as I think it was right before or right after we watched this, just so happened in the news, did you see the woman that was lured by a toddler on the side of a road? It was a woman. She There was a toddler on the side of the road, and this woman went um to get out i don't know she got out of the car or whatever it was and check on this kid and then she was abducted or, or was almost abducted you look that up while i go through this yeah. uh, just like a woman lured by child uh, or by toddler oh children are four times more likely to be trafficked by labor rather than sex which that goes in with the whole cobalt mines and everything for cell phones and all that bullshit. Um, that they're talked about in South America and I believe in Africa too, where there are all these mining. There's kids that are mining for our fucking cell phones and stuff, and they have a whole bunch of progressives and 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 uh, uh, whatever activists that are all about saving the world and saving this and 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 then when it comes, they're going on tweeting things. They're going on their Apple phone or iPhone or whatever and playing the part of activists yet the shit that they're using to be an activist is all centered around not even child but just slavery and slave workers yeah <laughs> no go ahead uh, so woman lured by toddler in bizarre kidnapping plot returns home alive the case of Carly Russell, who was allegedly kidnapped after stopping to help a toddler on the side of a busy highway, grabbed the attention of social media sleuths. The family of a woman who was allegedly abducted while assisting a toddler on the side of a highway say she spent the past 48 hours fighting for her life after she was found alive. Carlethia Carly Nicole Russell, 25, was reported as safe at her home on Saturday night following a two-day search after she went missing near the I-459 in Hoover, Alabama, about 16 kilometers south of Birmingham. So this goes on to describe what happened. Uh, She saw the child on the side of the highway, stopped to ask if she was okay. Apparently, she was on the phone. Right. Because, uh, hold on. When police, uh, so Carly stopped to help a toddler she spotted wandering along the side of the highway and had already called 911 and was talking to family when the line went silent but remained open on yep, Thursday that's evening. that's right. Yeah. Uh, police arrived on the scene minutes later. Her car was still running and the phone was there but no sign of her or the child. So this goes on to say... It remains unclear where Carly had been since Thursday when the incident happened, apparently. So, uh, so it so doesn't give any details. Like, she... She just showed up at her doorstep? Yeah. <laughs> that, to me, that almost sounds like... I'm not discrediting it now, but it almost sounds like... You remember the Matisse girl? Oh, six, Rachel. Six, seven years ago, whatever it yeah. was. The one that she even... I think Cheryl Crow or yeah. Shania Twain yeah. tweeted. I think it was Shania Twain. Shania Twain. I think if she was abducted by Santa Claus or something, when she like you drew out the picture of it and you saw it, I'm like, wait a minute. 
She um, gets abducted and this shows up and then no no follow up. Like, mm. well, I guess it all came out that she was faking it. Matisse? She, yeah. 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 She was at her boyfriend's or something like that. Like she was gone for like a week. Doped up and something. Yeah. Not that I'm saying that this is the same scenario, but it's just out of nowhere. Like, oh yeah, she returned safely and everything's fine. Like, what? Uh, this says, uh, though millions of children are trafficked, there is a much larger number of children involved in child labor that is not considered trafficking. There's an estimated 168 million children laborers around the world with around half of them participating in what is known as hazardous work, work that endangers child physical, emotional, or social well-being. 66% of trafficked victims, uh, child trafficked victims are girls from Save the Children of 2020. So here, really quick, before you go on, the only thing I have to say about this Carly story is it wouldn't surprise me if that sort of thing has happened. Of that? Yeah, where Man. children have been used to lure well, Yeah, because, adults. like I said, there's adults here, like they said, about one-third of them are children. Well, I remember, I mean, think about Balls of, Fu of Fury. Sad but true. You know, the, the ping pong movie? Right. Uh, the guy that plays, what's his name? He played on the Drew Carey show. Ryan Stiles? Yeah, no. The tall guy? No, the dark haired dude. The dark haired dude. Remember the courtesans? Mr. Fang's courtesans. They're all guys. No, I can't remember. So, so uh, how did you uh, end up here? He goes, oh, went to an audition, <laughs> ended up being a sex slave. <laughs> a, that's funny that's exactly what we're talking about <laughs> yeah but the point i'm making is the what i was gonna get at is it doesn't it wouldn't surprise me if that does happen that traffickers are using children to get adults this situation seems a little weird i will give you that and i hope that genuinely nothing bad happened to her and i hope she's okay but none of the articles, this this story was how old? A week? A week, yeah. Or so? A week or so ago. And there's still, I mean, I understand there's a process. I hope for the sake of her sanity and, and her validity and whatever you want to call it, uh, that they do release like some information about what happened. Right. Yeah, because it just seems, maybe there's something already out there, but that's just your first I thing you came it, across. Yeah. Well, I, I looked through two or three really quick. 99% of victims trafficked for sexual exploitation are women and girls. Traffickers well, no use threats shit, of li lies, violence, debt, bondage, and cohesion to force victims to engage in commercial sex acts against their will. Countries affected by trafficking. Uh, labor trafficking affects every country in the world, especially in the Asia-Pacific region where one in every 250 people are victims. Here's my problem with that statement. Every country in the world. Yeah. America is so fucking star-spangled banner that apparently that statement should say every country but the U.S. Okay, and, left. And yet, what there's, they said that for sex trafficking... Like the United States is the biggest, biggest consumer. Yeah, consumer. One hundred fifty billion dollar a year. Uh, well, enterprise. I think that's globally, but even Global. so, one hundred fifty billion dollar a year enterprise globally, right. and America is the number one consumer of it. Right. And they and you can't even say. And this this is where, like, when I made the statement, it's like, oh, it's like, it's like politicians and actors and blah blah blah. Because one Epstein, and with Ghislaine Maxwell and Epstein and all the celebrities and powerful people, politicians, whatever that have been to his island, and whether or not whatever happened, there's a laundry list of names, and maybe it'll come out to be some of them true, all of them true, most a few true, who knows? And we might never know. I mean, we still don't even know what the hell happened with the JFK assassination. Sixty years plus, and they're still keeping it under wraps. Yep. I think it's because uh, one argument with that, not to go way off sidetracked here, one argument with that is I think most people, their their initial response is, well, most all, everyone that was involved in that is dead now. But I don't think it has anything to do with the people. Because if the American people found out that the the institution 
of the FBI and the government had CIA. had something to do. Yeah, the CIA had something to do with the eradication of a sitting president at the time. That would shake every. I mean, their confidence in the government is already shaken to the core. If that came out to be a hundred percent factual, that they definitely had something to do with it. On paper, and not just hearsay by like someone Tucker Carlson said, yeah. I know someone involved with it, and they said yes, most likely it was some they were involved with it. But if it was documents were unsealed and not redacted, nothing redacted from it, and you read, oh shit, they did have something to do with it, that would like the confidence in the government would go from like ten percent to zero. Actually, I should say one because there'll still be people out there who'll be like, oh no, they're looking out for us. Ah, uh, okay, you just said it. Yeah, I was gonna say, but. Are you 100% sure about that? Because how many people now will sit there and say the economic crisis that we are going through as a country? There's, there's like, hold on. All right. There are people, <laughs> Sorry, I get fired up. <laughs> there are people out there, I've talked to them, that have sit, said, ver, not verbatim, but the message they got Your across paraphrase. was the economic, uh, what was the word I just said? Economic. No, before after that, the yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> the economic struggle attention? that we are going through as a country is a necessity. Oh, the recession is a necessity because we had so many. Our last president was so bad; he did everything, and this is us having to suffer through it to rectify the mistakes. Beyond that, I've heard people say we're not in a recession. Everything's fine, but like but talk si about putting the blinders on. They're sitting, the, but the point, the message, the, the message, the the point this guy was trying to get across, the message, the message this guy was trying to get what? across to me was, you know, it, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, it's been hung on a rough. If we got to go through it for the next ten to fifteen to twenty to make sure our the next generation or the generation after that or the generation after that finally gets back to where things were good for us again, then so be it. We got to deal with it. At least we have an acting president who knows what he's doing and actually cares about the people. Right. We had a tornado and lost power. So here we are. Anyway, going back on the whole JFK thing. Yeah. People, like, they want to say, well, that never happened. In, oh, regar in regards you said to that. Well, we were to the point where I said there's going to be people that will sit there and say, yeah, they did it for the best. For well, the, they, it, we, they wouldn't have done it if they didn't think it would help us. Yeah. In response to that, though, you can't even say that the the trafficking thing doesn't really happen in the United States because just 10 years, I think it was like 2012 or 2013, there was that um, uh, uh, pedophile ring that was busted out in California. F fucking California. <laughs> Go figure. Busted out in California involving politicians. Oh, yeah. What was it? 472 people were busted in it? Mm -hmm. Are you like, that was. Well, actually, no, that wasn't all over the news. You can find it. You yeah, search but for it. But it wasn't all over the news. Yeah. Shocker there. Oh, somebody got the shocker. <laughs> then, because they were a pedophile, we said, fuck it, we're giving them the Spock a shocker. Yeah, so... Then, because they found out we found out they were guys, we gave them the super shocker. That, for the guys out there, oh, the super shocker is one in the pee hole for being the bee hole. <laughs> Don't be a pedo. <laughs> so, so there was a thing with uh, um, Anthony Weiner. He has such a perfect name for all this bullshit that always surrounds him. I think, yeah, when we first got here, I was talking about the yeah. thing, and he was defending, like, he was asked, why does the Clintons have such a body count behind their politics and everything? And then he went on. The off. Clintons don't have a body count. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, do you mean uh, Hillary's sexual escapades? <laughs> Senator. She, she, she the, can't have too many bodies. And, and <laughs> oh, they're usually hanging. Out in a tree with self-inflicted gun wounds to the head. But we don't, we don't want to talk about that. Senator Weiner introduces legislation to end discrimination against LGBT people regarding sex offender registration. Did you hear about this? No. Wait, one, what? Senate Bill 145. They want to end... They want to... to you know what? Currently, for constantly, uh, yeah, illegal sexual, all right. Young people regarding California sex offender registry. Currently, for consensual yet illegal sexual relations between a teenager age 15 and over and a partner within 10 years of age, sexual intercourse does not require the offender to go 
um, to go onto the sex offender registry. Rather, the judge decides based on the facts of the case whether sex offender registration is warranted or unwarranted. <clears throat> okay. By so just to make sure I understand you clearly. Okay. In California, what this guy is trying to... No, not California. Where is this? Cali. In Cali. Okay, so yeah. In California, this guy is trying San to... San Francisco, specifically. Is trying to push it through that if a child of 15 sleeps with an adult of 25, depending on the contingencies... the, con the No, that, that's not the word. Depending on the circumstances, this person may not save, be up for even getting in trouble. No, this what the, the, okay, the so beginning. The beginning of this is a uh, illegal relations between a teenager age fifteen and over and a partner within ten years of age. Sexual intercourse does not require the offender to go onto the sex offender registry. So if a twenty-four year old, if a twenty-five, which is still fucked up, but so if a twenty-five, so okay, so then, so if a twenty-five year old sleeps with a fifteen-year-old, that's okay. They don't need to be registered, right? Apparently, as long as it's consensual. Yeah. I don't. Um, that's not. But you can't smoke a cigarette till you're twenty-one. You can choose to get. Oh my god. So so, it says, SB 145 does not change whether or not particular behavior is a crime and does not change the potential sentence of having no, sex with obviously. an underage person. Rather, the bill simply gives judges the ability to evaluate whether or not the required registration as a sex offender. To be clear, this judicial discretion, discretion for sex offender registration is already the law for vaginal intercourse between 15 and 17 year old and someone up to 10 years old older sb 145 simply extends the discretion to other forms of intercourse a judge will still be able to place someone on the registry if the behavior is issue as predator uh, at issue was predatory or otherwise uh, egregious this change will treat straight and lgbt young people Lord. equally and the discrimination against lgbt people and ensure california stops uh, stigmatizing lgb sexual relations I actually know what those words meant. <laughs> I understood every word in that sense. <laughs> I'm not stupid. But on a serious note, so, but still, no, you know. You can fucking die for your country at 18. You can't smoke a cigarette or drink a beer till you're 21. But to sit there and say, oh, it's okay. You can't decide it's a good or a bad thing to smoke a cigarette before you're 21, but you can choose to have vaginal or anal sex, get pregnant, or get an STD. As long as you guys are both consenting, we think you're mature enough for that decision. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying every fucking 15-year-old is an immature little fuckhead. Well. <laughs> Only when they're 6'2 and about 175 pounds can they get on your fucking nerves. <laughs> I'm not describing anybody specifically. Love you, kid. Um, said Anthony Weiner pushed a bill that would discriminalize sex with a minor as long as the minor is part of the LGBTQ community. So now they get special privileges. Huh. Or, or, or are they going to flip that shit and say, oh, you're targeting the LGBTQ because we're not real people. It's not considered sexual assault if you rape a 14-year-old or a 15, uh, a 16-year-old and you're 25. I mean, yeah, I didn't even think about it that way. <laughs> That's fucked up, right? <laughs> that, that can go both ways. Yeah, They're either going to sit there and say, yay, we've got privileges because we're LGBTQ and A through Z. Um, or... You guys are targeting us. You're saying it's okay to rape a gay 16-year-old or you know, a lesbian 15-year-old. You just introduce two sides of a subdivision of a subdivision, like, split. <laughs> you, you, you literally just, like... Mind blown. You know how everything is, like, now we're just... Everyone's divided. Yeah. You just made another group that will be divided. They're, they're trying to attack us. No, they're trying to help us. Well, you're a fucking bigot. <laughs> 
You're welcome. <laughs> Can we toss it, C in there now? It's a good now? thing we're coming together to split everyone apart. <laughs> can we can we toss the C in there now because I just helped you guys? <laughs> LGBTQ plus C. <laughs> I'm finally included in something. <laughs> I'm participating what, in What's life? that from? Oh, the longest yard? How, how about yeah. the love of a beautiful woman? Trust me. The sex you want, you ain't having. The sex you haven't, you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> oh... <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah, uh, but watch, that's gonna happen. And going all the way back, the when we were watching the movie, this has all to do with yeah. shit with the movie. But we were watching the movie at the end of it. I have never heard. While we were watching the movie, I I made this comment to a whole bunch of people. I've talked about the movie, and they're like, "Oh, how was it?" I'm like, Phew. "But I've never heard a a theater so." dead silent oh, while we were watching the movie start to finish yes <laughs> so i've i've never heard a theater oh yeah so dead silent like start you, could, to, you the, could yeah the you lions could. Gate, i think it was lions gate no it was uh artisan or something but was uh, it it was the studio was angel studio angel studios angel studios comes up on the screen and you were hearing people was Based on it, well, the last thing I heard was like it said, based on a true story, and there was like the older couple that was sitting a few rows back. Oh and yeah, like, oh it was based on a true story, and then after that, nothing. Not a fucking like, sound the whole movie. Yeah, it like, was dead I, silent. Put it to you this way: my dumbass goes to see a movie about a very tragic story. I get fucking popcorn and soda. Gosh. <laughs> it got to the point where I would eating twi twi I would, or fucking Kit Kat during it. <laughs> I would put the popcorn in my mouth, close my mouth all the way, and then wait for it to soften up to mush <laughs> so I could chew it without crunching. Because I, because yeah, there's probably people in the fucking back row that would be able to hear that. Like, who the fuck is eating during this movie? <laughs> Charlie's <laughs> up there subconsciously, like, mm. and then the soda. I got to where I thought it was the end. Of I stopped. Had to wait 15, 20 minutes later. Move it a little bit. Okay, good. There's enough ice melted. Stop. <laughs> I never once to hit the... <laughs> nope. I made sure not to make a fucking sound. Because no, it was dead silent during that movie because it was, it was so much to take in. Yeah, it really was. It really was. At the end of the movie, they had that um, that uh, countdown, the timer. Like, there's two minutes to a special message from Jim Caviezel, the guy mm. who played Tim Oh, Bell. yeah. At the end of the movie, nobody fucking left. Everyone stayed at the end. Then he, he just ran a message basically telling, like, the importance of the movie and, like, uh, bringing awareness to the whole subject matter. And a short story of how, like, they went through five years of trying to get the thing to come out because oh, Fox yeah. owned it and then Disney bought Fox. Disney didn't want to touch it. So they had Angel Studio come in. They had to buy the rights back to actually distribute it. And even so, after they had, like, loop after loop, they had to jump through. And then at the end, they give you the uh, the scanner QR code to yeah. donate to, to um, pay it forward. Pay it, yeah, to pay ticket. it forward. Um, you could you could either donate money, right, towards somebody <clears throat> who wants the like, towards. So basically, someone you could go on and say, "Oh, there's a, enough money in this account to buy a ticket." Boom, buy a ticket. Or right. you could buy tickets, and people could just go on to the website and get free tickets. Yeah. And it, we ended up; she actually did it for us. Three, we got yeah. three tickets, uh, one from representing basically each of us. The movie is made. It cracked this a couple of days ago. It was reported cracked a hundred million dollars. So it's made its money back at least a lot. That's good. A lot. I mean, there's one of the few movies that actually went up. It made it made more the second week. I think it made like seventeen, a little over seventeen million the first week, the Fourth of July when it came out that week. Yeah. The next week it made like twenty, twenty nine million. Like mm -hmm. so, it went up just from word of mouth, which I like to see. But yeah, it cracked a hundred million. Good. Um, Good. But yeah, I I can't, I, I can't recommend it enough. And a lot of people I've talked to just at my job and stuff, so yeah, you want to go, you want to go watch it. So there's people just, that work in the district office. They're like, oh, I gotta go see it now. Just they're be like, prepared. It, it is a real heavy. Movie. Oh yeah, I tell them it's like it, it's not a popcorn flick. For <laughs> <laughs> I warned you, asshole. <laughs> and there you have your reason why. <laughs> On a side note. Another story from behind the scenes that uh, uh, Tim Ballard hasn't watched a movie, says he can't. Turns out that 
a lot other than the restricted area from Columbia. Most of that movie, the island where the kids were picked up, was shot on scene. That the shit actually happened. Yeah. So, and he's like, I just don't want to watch because he he was part of it. He lived it, so yeah, he doesn't want to watch it. But so that just adds that little bit of extra weight to it. Yeah. So yeah, the the website to donate to the trafficking thing is ourrescue.org. O U R rescue dot org. So do the world a favor <laughs> because the shit's real. And in the movie, they give off some other stats. Like I read up some, so they said it was a hundred fifty billion dollar a year business that's slowly taking globally. It, no, it is the leading. Is it the leading now? I know yes. they said it was like it's yeah, it's surpassing the drug, which is only at like twenty five. No, no, like I think it's like a hundred hundred million, million. Yeah. hundred, hundred billion, billion, hundred yeah. billion, yeah. But I mean, even so, the fact that ugh, and the United States is the biggest consumer. Tra- yep. Of, yeah, of sex trafficking anyway. Yeah. Which I mean, they say I think it was on the podcast he was talking about. You go to these like the especially in the. Uh, Central and South America, you go there and a lot of these guys go up to you, you tourists, thinking that you're looking for a good time. It's like, hey, you want a good time? It's like, that that's where they're going to try to pass some of this shit off. And that, like saying before, is that how they <laughs> ended up st- getting that sting while they were shooting the film? Yeah. Segwaying off of that. That's the movie. Go see it. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's fucking heavy, though. <laughs> it is. This is from a couple weeks ago. Cocaine in the White House. Oh, yeah. I heard something about that. <laughs> Instantly. First name that comes to mind. Bush. <laughs> I, that's true, though. No. His they, was crack. Most, yeah. That's right. His. Uh, Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, most people went, uh, Hunter Biden. Even if it's not, there's such a stigma now because of the laptop and everything else. Oh, yeah. You see that thing, speaking of Hunter, Margie Taylor Green had pictures of naked Hunter Biden that she showed, I think it was in, in the Senate, that she just said, what's this, basically? <laughs> so there's pictures of nude Hunter Biden from taken from his laptop. So what the fuck is this then, basically? Paraphrasing. <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene, like, leave it up to her to just fucking shake shit up. Love you. Granted, she says stuff sometimes, so like, eh, you should probably dial that one back. But yeah, so there was drugs found in the West Wing of the, of the uh, White House. Well, did, was it identified as cocaine? Yeah. Cocaine. Okay, because I remember when I first heard about it, there was an unknown white pottery substance. The, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's... And some people are saying, well, maybe it was smuggled in or placed as like a, a, a plant, kind of like to set someone up. There's some people that work in the White House that have, since that came out, that have gone on record saying, like, the amount of security in the White House, saying, there's no fucking way a tourist would have gotten that in the White House. <laughs> That's not a thing. Especially where it was found in the West Wing. Yeah. Where, here's another thing, the location of the substance had changed, like, two or three times what they said, where they found it. Turns out... The last I knew, like in the White House, it was found in a locker, I believe. And where it was found, there's only so many people that have clearance to go in that room. <laughs> so it kind of narrows it down. No it comes tourists. to find out that's what's really keeping Joe Biden up and running. <laughs> it's cocaine and so, hookers. I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, I, I'm so old. I know I mix up. So that's what it is. He's not trying to sniff children. He's forgetting where he's at. <laughs> and instead of sniffing cocaine, is this off a mirror? Ho- is this what I look like? Instead of sniffing, no, co- no, no, no. Instead of sniffing cocaine off of a hooker's ass, he forgets where he is. Oh, look, she got dandruff. That's a process. Oh, cocaine. Uh, oh, that's not. Uh, I'm not awake yet. That's then, not a hooker. Must not be it. It's Ajax. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Uh, it's fucked uh, up. Uh, 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 Cheech and Chong still sm- or up in smoke. <laughs> 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 the fucking Ajax. Wow. <laughs> I'm no, no, that was, that was, I think that was next movie or still smoke. One of those. I don't know. Uh, uh, Cheech and Chong's next movie. He's like, ah, it tastes. Like, and he's not. Ah, I'm gonna die. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, space, that's cl- it's space cold, <laughs> man. I'm gonna die. Yeah, when he sniffs the fucking Ajax and drinks the dog pee. Or no, drinks his sister's pee. Yeah, no, it was salt. He drinks his sister's pee. And- no. Yeah, and it was a bag of salt, and you're like, oh, it I don't want to be responsible. Yeah, it was. I don't want to be respons- responsible for getting you hooked up. Oh, <laughs> Turn you into a drug addict. He's like, oh, no. my God, please, please. No, please. I, like I, just, I just want to smell it. He's like, okay, don't, don't take any. He's like, okay, I just want to smell it. Cross my heart or hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's salt. <laughs> No, I like the part when he goes, Oh, I'm really gonna fuck with my parole officer's head this time. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that, man? My sister's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, it's like last week I brought up a jar of man that had mayonnaise floating in him. He thought I was on some kind of drugs again. And this week I'm really gonna fuck with him. Why is that? I have my sister's pee and she's pregnant. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No fingerprints or DNA turned up on the baggie of cocaine found in a lobby at the house, White House last week. Yeah, Despite definitely. a sophisticated FBI crime lab analysis, the surveillance footage of the area didn't identify a suspect according to a summary of Secret Service investigation obtained by the Associated Press. There are no leads who brought the drugs into the building. Of course there's not. Of course there's not. We're in the White House and they can't fucking figure this one out. Well, think about it this way. We can figure out and track that child trafficking, human trafficking, sex trafficking, whatever kind of human trafficking you want to call it, is a $150 billion a year global business. We can track that. It's almost like they know exactly where the expenses are going. (laughs) But we can't figure out who snuck a little bit of yayo into the fucking White House. Uh Oh, bullshit. Yeah. Hunter had that shit up his ass. His fucking father <laughs> he caught it him. into his own fucking way. His, his father caught him trying to pull it out, so he's like, oh, I don't know what happened, man. Hunter, why does he have a... Sp- <laughs> Are you just racist against he's your own people? He's got a burning baby on me. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was trying to save a baby in this oh, burning that. building. Yeah. So yeah, I got a burning, burning baby all over me. You're saying that Hunter boofed it into the Fuck White Hunter House? Hunter it. Is it. Hunter, you know, you... You kind of live here. You don't have to do that. Yeah, no, I do. No, Dad, I don't. I don't live here. I'm just staying because... You don't understand me. I don't have a place to stay right now. I do it because I watch you. <laughs> I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> uh-uh, you stupid son of a bitch. Oh. I got out eight kilos up my ass. And the kids like to rub my hair and legs. The U.S. Secret Service agents found the white powder during a routine White House sweep on July 2nd in a heavily trafficked West Wing lobby. Oh, bullshit. Where staff go in and out, and tour groups gather to drop their phones and other belongings. You were bullshit. <laughs> you mean to tell me in a central spot where everything gets checked, a bag of cocaine gets by? You know, that it's one of two things. This either shows the the blatant lie that they'll push out to the media, which I think most people, will, that's what they're going to run with. It's yeah. like, that's fucking bullshit. And maybe rightfully so. Or the the immense failure, for lack of a better term, of security responsibility whatever you want to call it that right now is in the white house like how (laughs) bullshit no we can stop a guy from driving across country in a van Mm. with some yeah that's right we can stop that shit they're gonna do what and then but but you can bring (laughs) yeah You can bring booger sugar into the White House and not even tell... Oh, how'd that happen? I'm just saying. That's basically um, what they're saying is this. They're constantly doing this. Can't see anything over here. Hmm, I'll get you. And your little dog, too. Fuck, dude. <laughs> so, it's one of two things. Yeah, so, I, I, I think I would go along with the whole... Well, they're just, like... It's just a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Apparently, keeping on with the Bidens, because why the fuck not? <laughs> That's what we do. First it was COVID, now it's the Bidens. 
A government appeals ruling that restricts feds from contacting social media firms. In other words, Biden administration wants to bypass the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration is appealing a court ruling sharply limiting the ability of federal officials to interact with social media companies about the content contained on their platforms. In addition, a Justice Department official said Wednesday night that attorney attorneys there plan to act exponentially to seek a stay of the unusual injunction er, injunction issued on July 4th okay. by the U.S. District <clears throat> Court Judge Terry Daughtry in response to a lawsuit filed by Louisiana and Missouri last year. The suit claims that President Joe Biden's White House, the Department of Health and Human Services, and officials at other agencies committed censorship in violation of the First Amendment by pressuring social media companies to remove or limit access to anti-vaccine posts and take down the accounts of certain users. Jesus. Social media companies, like other private businesses, don't generally have to observe First Amendment standards because they're because they are privately owned yes that is true but this point and i was discussing this with her before this is where it gets shady okay because social media is privately owned yeah so by that standard <clears throat> technically yeah they can say well, we can censor what we want like we can talk about what we want and what we don't want on the show yeah here's where it gets weird though because right now social media is so fucking big Joe Rogan made this point a few years ago. Social media is like on that weird, blurry line of privately owned business, but it's so big and used at such a scale for so many things, so marketing. Scale, yeah. Is it not sort of considered a utility now? Like electric, like plumbing, you know, water. Don't say that. But then if it, if, if it crosses that... Does that give everybody the right now to, it's like, you can't, like, it's kind of like when cell phones came out. When cell phones first came out, you didn't need them. Like, no. you didn't, like, there's no reason, <clears throat> you didn't need them. Like, there was landlines and whatever. Like, that was, now, if you, and you went for a job, that like, didn't matter. Now, if you go for a job and you don't have a cell phone, because now everyone expects, like, I need to get a hold of you now. Oh, yeah. And, like, time is money. That's all businesses are now. Time is money. If I can't some get a hold. Some jobs require a GPS. Yeah, which some jobs. have a fucking hand, hand fancy version of it. Yeah, some jobs give you uh, their own cell phone. Oh, so yeah. So you have two phones. That's required now. Social media is like in that area right now where it could be that. And if that's the case for marketing and what have you, like yeah. it could be that. If that's the case, does that now include First Amendment? Like if I want to say something, you can say it and you can't censor me because now it's surpassed that use usage wise. It's surpassed the privately owned business into a utility like i said before the argument would be well there's other options social media wise like yeah. well if you don't want youtube there's rumble but i mean facts are facts youtube is massive it's, well the it's the place the fact so at the end of it when you stop and think about it the fact that you even put the word utility on it is a fucking good terminology mm. the reason i say that if you have, if you wish to have any form of social media, whether it be to see it or use it, to whether to to view it or um, distribute on it, mm -hmm. you should have to pay a fee. And I, but no, what, what that comes down to now is now I yeah. you take it into a. You take it to that level of, well, look, this is no longer, they provide a service. They right. no longer get to say, okay, they provide a service now. They no longer get to say what I can and can't put on it. Right. Because like the electricity, prime example, they give us the electricity. They can't say what we can and can't use it for. Yet. Yet. Right. Uh, 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 the cars we buy and pay for. The car payment you make. Mm-hmm. They give us a car. They can't tell us where we can and can't go with it. Yet. Where are we going with this? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Social credit score. But what I'm... So... But, yeah. 
eventually it's going to get to the point where if they did that, yeah, no, that's fucked up. I, I'm not against paying for the service. If that means if paying for it, which secures my freedom. Yeah. If paying for it says we can, unless, I mean, there's obvious things, threats, doxing, oh, things yeah. of that nature. Something completely well, I'm different. I'm pretty sure if you use the, your fucking electricity to electrocute somebody, they're probably going to come in and say, hey, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, you can't do that. Yeah, I don't think you can make that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but there's... Right there, it's like you just said. That's what I was trying to get at. Thank right. you for continuing that. Thank you for finishing that Finishing that for me. Technical difficulties. Um, if you pay for a service, you should have the... Free, you, you are paying for that securement of your freedom to use it how you choose, so choose. Right. Within reason. The problem is, like you kept saying when you kept joking with it, yet, yet. Right. The, at, at what point, no matter the, the point I'm getting at, the, the where I want to tie this off with, the, where I want to end my point is, mm. doesn't matter how they look at it. doesn't matter what approach they try to take. It's going to come down to where they're not going to stop until they have what they want. And that is no more first. Yeah. And... I, oh. Here's the, which is more dangerous, losing the first or losing the second? Losing the first. Yeah. Because if you don't, losing the second, no one says you can't. Yeah, I agree. Because losing the, if you lose a second, if. Peaceful protesting. That. Real. It's just that. Peaceful protesting, real, genuine, peaceful protesting, where you get five million people who literally go to the White House and sit around that place and lock it down. Mm. They don't move till Biden resigns, let's say. Are you really? You cannot. You fast enough, or even resourceful enough, you cannot bring in enough law enforcement to remove that right it's, in a reasonable amount of time it's not even it's the spread of like knowledge what's the cliche saying knowledge is power yep you take away it. the second amendment you take away people's guns people and, will still and march. People everyone will still protest will, everyone will say well if you do that then like tyrannical governments that's where like that's that's where they stem it's like they come in and take take the second amendment away our second amendment are just guns for any yeah. other nation they take that away and then they can just run rampant but if you have freedom of speech you can still spread that because if something like that were to happen obviously they're going to get on whatever airways or something and spread propaganda and be like oh we're trying to save you we're doing the best blah 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 but if there's still freedom of speech there's still going to be a large group of people that inform everybody no this is what's actually going yeah. on and then show videos which happens all the time and Exactly. All sorts of social media. So yeah, the the First Amendment, losing the First Amendment, would be worse. Than would be worse. Senate. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. I mean, obviously you do. I yeah. I appreciate that you do. Um, and I know most some of you at home might say no, no. But when you stop and think about it, one bullet can kill one person. Right. One sentence can ruin an entire fucking regime regime uh, i mean you can literally like that candidate who did the interview i forgot on what news outlet it was he talked about uh or tucker carlson was asking him about like you know you're three, mike pence that's not my problem yeah that's what he said he's like what you're you're you just about, like ukraine and this and that they don't have enough tanks and yet uh, yeah in reverse order he goes we have all these problems are feeling all this stuff in all these cities and things aren't getting better. We have, you know, problem all X, Y, and Z. That. And your, your concern, concern is, is that Ukraine doesn't have enough tanks. And without missing a beat, how the fuck this happens? Pence, Pence goes, that's not my problem, Tucker. I'm like, I, at that, he killed his presidential run right there. He pr killed it. Right. One sentence. And that's a good kind of kill. One sentence. Yeah. Just fucking lost him, his presidential candidacy. How many people work for him? Right. He just probably put 100, 200 people out of a job. Like Pence and was. And anybody that says, oh, you work for Mike Pence? No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that's like having Jeffrey Upste Epstein. That's like asking. That's like if Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself and became a party planner. Hey, I want to invite all these people over. What's your name? Mm. Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, no, thank you. 
Um, I prefer to serve pizza, pizza, ice cream, and cupcakes and hot dogs at my parties. And chickens. And chickens. Um, yeah, the minute he said that, it, that killed his... I, like, I don't think he was that high. He might have been like four or five, like as far as like candidate, like presidential yeah. running, like where his um, ranking was for the Republican primary. But that just completely tanked no. it. I think now like it goes Vivek Ramaswamy... Uh, from like three up, I think it's like Vivek Ramaswamy, um, Descent, DeSantis, oh, DeSantis, no, from Republican side, oh, DeSantis, Republican. and then Trump. Oh, okay. Kennedy keeps rising on the Democratic side, and boy, he, he, I don't like his stance in the Second Amendment at all. And he says some stuff that I'm like, mm, but that's just because he's running from the left. But he's like classic, he really is conservative in today's standards. Yeah, he's running on classic libertarian. He says a lot of shit. He challenges. He challenges the establishment, and especially when it comes to activism, and and um. Um, and he was all about what, cleaning up rivers and shit like that. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, vaccines in particular, and that's why he's being attacked so hard by the left right now. And they are doing everything in their power to discredit him. Oh, yeah. Which the more they do to discredit him, the more I'm like, well, let the man speak. Like, call him racist and this. Th they are going all out. And that's the fucking problem with the left I have, too, is they throw around the term racist so much, they're bastardizing it and just taking any weight that it has behind it, just taking it away and making oh, it just yeah. a fucking comma now. They say it more than I drop the f bomb on this show. <laughs> like they just like you. You did what? I don't like that. You must be a racist, you bigot. And now, like you said, it's gotten to the point where it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Because of now, course, even black people, Asian people, Hispanic people, Jewish people, people of all any and all cultures have gotten to the point now. Oh, that's right. Because you can't do, you can't say anything wrong without it being a racist. People are mocking it now. Right. They have, like you said, you said it perfectly. They bastardized the word. Every every minority, too. Well, I shouldn't say every, but there's a lot of minorities out there that they claim the same thing. Most of the people that are saying this that aren't part of, like, the political, like, leaders are, like, the white female liberals. They're the ones that are screaming, this is racist. And most, like, the minorities are like, where? <laughs> One more thing. You got time for one more thing? Yeah, sure. Going along with that, Jason Aldean. Oh, my God. <laughs> because that's fresh. Because that's so fresh. To, like, just a, a couple days ago. Did you watch the music video? <laughs> Part of it. I just saw clips of it. I just, I was more involved, like, con not concerned, but interested in, like, because I'm not a country. Like, you know me a long time. 20 years you know, years. like, my, my stance in, like, music and interest oh, and yeah. stuff. And you know how I feel about country, specifically modern country. Oh, yeah. From, like, the late 80s on. Not a fan, to say the least. It's twang pop to me. I fucking can't stand it. With that said, I, I heard about this whole thing with... with the song I can't remember the name of it. Is it. Maybe just try that in a small town or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember. And everyone, all I heard was that song is look at that it's right there. That song is racist. Okay, so how is it racist? <laughs> so where, where's I'm I'm looking up the 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 lyrics to it. Mm-hmm. I'll help you. Of course, I have every other thing. There we go. All I heard was how racist the song was. Got it. All right, you got it? Sucker. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, go ahead. So, I'm just going to... I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it. No, no, I don't need you to sing it. Okay. Sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk, mm -hmm. carjack an old lady at a red light, mm -hmm. pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. You think it's cool? Well, act a fool if you like. Cuss out a cop, spit in his face, stomp on the flag and light it up. Yeah, you think you're tough. Well, try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Around here, 
we take care of our own. You cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't try that in a small town. Got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're going to round up. Well, that ship might fly in the city. Good luck. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Okay, it's a repeat of that one, that verse. Full of good old boys, raised up right. If you're looking for a fight, try that in a small town. Try that in a small town. See how far you make it down the road. Repeat that. Try that in a small town. Ooh, ooh, try that in a small town. So that's racist. It's it's pro lynching, is what I heard. Oh yeah, pro lynching. Pro lynch mob. Yeah. So what is being claimed is that it's it's a it's a sun. They're talking about sundown towns. Which, which, for those of you at home who don't know, the the term out that the phrase sundown town comes from a time when. You know, it's like the, the color of your skin, teens and twenties or something like that. The color of your skin your dictated hundred. whether you could be out and about. Actually, not even the color of your skin, your ethnicity. Italians, Jews didn't matter. Right. Sundown town meant you were not supposed to be out on the town if you were not white. Right. In America, and other. Here's the worst part because this is something I looked into. It's fun that you bring it up. You know we didn't invent that? What? Nope. <laughs> nope. We didn't invent Sundown Town. Uh, it, the, it comes back from... Actually, like uh, I want to say it was like uh, the one article I read. They dated it back to as far as... Um, like uh, Chinese empires. Mm. Dynasties and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Where... Mongolia. You weren't allowed out. Outsiders were not allowed in, no matter what. Yeah, it's almost like that's a fucking not a new thing. Trade was allowed through these towns, but if you were not of Asian ethnicity, you were not allowed to trade through, let alone be in those areas, be in those trade routes after sundown. Because mm. you were straight up Harry carried. Next thing you're going to tell Ari me that, <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me that Trump was the only president that doesn't have any slavery in his history. No lineage? Nothing? No slave you owners? You didn't know that? Yeah, mm. Trump never, Tr- Trump's family never owned a slave. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, did you know? This is a little fun fact. I, I don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> you know, blacks weren't the first ever enslaved. In fact, their number is only a fraction of the amount of people that have been enslaved in this world. Huh. You know, because slavery didn't start in America. <laughs> in fact, there's more. So it's like there's more uh, slaves now than there was. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Who, uh, I think it was whites <laughs> were the most enslaved skin color. But that's fake. Fake news. Sorry. Fake news. Yeah. Please don't. Please don't fake take this news, video YouTube. down YouTube for fake news. That's that's malinformation. <laughs> malinformation. Yeah. That's not even misinformation. Now it's malinformation. It's information that's but just yeah, not so fucking convenient. But yeah. So sundown wasn't even started in America. It basically came from I want to say, like I said, the article I read based it out of Asian Dynasty, Empire Dynasty era, where trade routes were allowed, but if you were not of the Asian ethnicity, you were not allowed on those routes after sundown. So this song is supposedly pro lynch mob and pro sundown town. Right. When there's not a fucking comment. Oh my god, people are fucking fishing. The I all right, so like I said, knowing my history, I'm like not I'm Continue, not I'm so. not a com- country fan at all. No. So I have no reason just genre wise, music wise, I have no reason to defend this song. I couldn't care any fucking less. As far as just the subject of what's being preached and what I've heard from the lyrics, I don't know what the fuck they're fishing for. <laughs> well, I know what they're fishing for, but I don't know what where they're pulling it from. What's interesting to me is the way a lot of wokeism, we'll call it, I can't call it left because it's not all the left, but the extreme left and the woke cult. Mm-hmm. What they're claiming is that, or what they are claiming implies that 
what they're talking about in this is like, oh, carjacking, spitting in a woman's face. The way they're pinning that says to me anyway that the only people that do this kind of thing, all these things in the small town, try it here. Are people of other race. Are people of mi- minorities. <laughs> what, insert whatever color you want or whatever, religion, ethnic. That's what that implies to me. That's what they are saying, which in my eyes, I kind of think that's overtly racist <laughs> but that's from uh, not the left saying that's racist that's from outside of that being like well that's kind of fucking racist what you just said <laughs> kind of like you know biden saying if you don't vote for me you ain't black but any racist that doesn't matter <laughs> so yeah the the all dean song i was like well that's interesting it's a good song i have actually listened to it i've listened to just segments of it i, I like i said i heard about the whole deal i'm like what and then of course they're gonna play sex checks into the song and be like well it's this i'm like hey, it just worst, sounds like any old fucking country song to the me. the worst part is i've been i'm gonna go there i'm gonna go there okay get ready i'm starting the engine put it in gear i just fucking put the pedal down on the floor <laughs> i've been in black neighborhoods where you didn't fuck around because if you fucked around, you found out. Mm. I've been in Italian neighborhoods. I've been in Asian communities. I've been in Hispanic communities where they all have that fucking mindset. This is our community. Fuck around and find out. Right. So it's a normal (laughs) thing. No, it's a thing to protect your community. That's what I mean. I mean, it's a normal thing. Oh, it's not racist. (laughs) There's nothing pro fucking lynching. Oh my god, whatever you fucks. There, the one. The, yeah, so that's what. I um. Yeah, I I heard it and it's like, oh, this is pro lynching. I'm like, where? I don't understand where you're pulling that from. But um, yeah. So I guess it's racist. People just need something to attack. You know, like unborn children. that 93% of them are just contraception (laughs) (laughs) bye come on here yeah feed it once and now it stays (laughs) now it stays (laughs) so tear me open but beware (laughs) This thing's inside without, without a care. care. And Charlie just <laughs> won't fucking leave. So hold me until he it sleeps. sleeps. It grips you so obey. Yeah. That's a good sound. <laughs> no, but uh. <laughs> <laughs>